Hey guys, it's Taylor here with New Way Van Life. We got EcoFlow's new power kit here and we are going to explore the touch screen display console today. We're still figuring this thing out. There's still a lot to learn and we're learning with you guys, so. Just a reminder for everyone, this is still a pre-release product that EcoFlow is still working on and fine-tuning. So a lot of these little issues will be addressed and fixed as time progresses. Be patient, bear with us. We'll let you know everything as we figure it out. Okay, so let's just start with what I've been calling the home screen right here. This is your basic information that you're going to be able to receive by just taking a quick glance. Your battery levels, how much power is being inputted, and how much power is being output. So the first thing I want to talk about is the system tab here. From the home screen, you can see the battery life essentially. So you got run time in days and hours, and you also got a battery percentage. Very self-explanatory, very simple. With the input tab, that's gonna show you what is getting power to the system. So you have an alternator icon, two different solar panel icons here, and then your AC or shore power icon right there. Finally, on the home screen, we come to the output tab. Output's obviously the inverse to the input, so whatever your power kit is giving power to will be displayed in the output tab. From the home screen, you'll only be able to see total wattage for the system output and what the wattage is for each specific current. Also, you'll have two toggle switches, which basically turns the current on and off. The last thing we need to discuss on the home screen is the settings option. They're very basic. The first one is what firmware version we're on. We can't really interact with that at all. I believe that has to do with backend. The log, same thing. You can't access that tab. The display setting is for the screen brightness. The system tab there's only one thing in the settings for this also, and this is essentially to tell the system when you want your screen to fall asleep. And then finally you have your Wi-Fi. So this allows you to connect the system to the Wi-Fi. Moving on, we'll just explore each one of these tabs one at a time. For the system tab, when you open it up, it gives you a more in-depth look at your actual power storage. So we're essentially looking at the batteries right now. Again, it'll give you your running time in days and hours and a percentage, which is visualized with a graph. Each of these batteries can be monitored through this touchscreen display with ease. As you can see, they're named, so the system automatically detects what what kind of battery they are. In the first battery slot we have a 2 kilowatt hour and then the second battery slot we have a 2 kilowatt hour also. In the third battery slot we have nothing plugged in so it shows nothing. This system monitors the battery's temperature, the battery's charge, the specific voltage, and the amperage. So any information you're going to want on your batteries you can all find right here inside of the systems tab. The last thing we'll discuss in terms of the system is you can adjust to what level you want your battery to be charged to and at what level your batteries can start to discharge. The charge level will dictate to what percent the batteries will be charged to. So if I set it to 80%, the batteries will only charge to 80% capacity. Okay, moving on, we're gonna explore the input tab. Right here the input tab, we get to see real-time power. So this is the watts that the system is receiving from either your alternator, solar power, or shore hookup. Today energy, this is another one of the little things I believe is a bug. This number has not changed. We haven't got to see it change yet. So we're not really sure what it's supposed to tell you. Today energy, I would assume it's going to give you a reading of how much energy you use today. But again, we don't really know. Now for each source, you have specific information, a lot like the actual system tab with the battery. You get to see the specific wattage the alternator is bringing to the system, along with what volts the alternator is charging at and what amperage the alternator is charging at. They have a little alternator icon to give you a little visual help there. And each one of these inputs can be 
toggled on and off at your will. So if you prefer to only be charging with your solar panels, you could just turn the solar on. You could see this little graph over here. This is the power curve. When you turn on different inputs, you can see the difference in how much energy is being provided to your system. It's not really very easy to demonstrate right now since we have our batteries at 100%, but. 13, 18 watts, and you could see just a little slight increase in the graph here. So it's essentially the input tab with one exception. You can adjust the speed at which your system will charge. So your AC input current, that is for your shore power hookup. That's plugging your extension cord into your RV. You're getting power from the grid and you can adjust at what amperage that power is coming in. If you wanna make sure that it doesn't harm your system you're charging from, you could turn it way down to one amp. If you want it to charge as fast as possible and you know the system can handle it, you want to turn it up to 30 amps. Right now we're being safe. We have it at 16 amps. Very similarly, you can adjust the input current for your alternator charging as well, all the way from five amps to 60 amps. That's going to do for the input tab. All right, guys, the final tab we'll be exploring is the output tab. As you can see, it looks very similar to the input tab. Over here, we have real-time power in watts, and that is essentially what is being drawn from the power system right now. Again, today, energy is not currently working. The number hasn't changed since we first started exploring the system. One of the coolest things is that each different circuit in the distribution box can be labeled and have a designated icon for it. So as you can see, we have a few down here. Here. The first circuit is the outlets on the passenger side of the vehicle. As you can see, they have 120 volts going to that circuit, and you can have up to six different outputs on the AC side. Now, it also gives you the option to control the AC and DC via toggle switches here. So we could go ahead and turn the AC power off and turn it back on. Now, if we want to explore the DC circuits, all we have to do is click on the DC button here that also has the wattage next to it and the toggle switch, and you'll find all of your DC circuits. Now, like I mentioned, you have six AC circuits, you have 12 DC circuits. Another very, very exciting and cool feature is that six of these DC circuits are all controlled remotely. So six of them are able to be remote controlled and six of them are gonna be static with no toggle on and off option. Now, if we explore these specific circuits, we can see an icon for half of them, a toggle off and on switch, what circuit they are inside of the distribution box, which is designated by that number, one, two, three, as you can see, it's number one here. You are able to label that specific circuit. You can see what draw in terms of what, what voltage they're at, and what amperage they're currently at. Now, if you click on the actual option, this is where you can edit the circuits. So this is where I can change my naming conventions and also select what kind of icon I'd like to be representing that circuit. Now again, with the power curve here, you can see it's gonna change with each circuit I turn off. So you'll get a, a good understanding of how much power is being drawn from each specific circuit. And now finally with the output tab, we'll explore the settings options. And there is only one that you can change. And that's if you want your DC to be 12 volt or 24 volt, that's about it. The control panel is connected to the system via ethernet cable plugged in right here. As you can see, these are mounting options and it comes with a mounting bracket that the unit will slide into. Okay guys, thanks for watching. That's gonna do it for the video today. If you're interested in learning more about this power kit, we've explored all of the other components. Check out the YouTube playlist. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment on the video. Peace out.